Hello, my name is Kevin. I am from USA. And the paper I'm presenting today is titled Algorithm Speedups of 3x plus 1 Convergence Verification Series. Let me share my screen. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let, sorry. let me start by introducing the conjecture that our, the, the algorithm we study or testing. So the cause conjecture states that for this given function shown on the screen t of x, if we repeatedly apply it to any natural number um, input, the result will eventually converge down to one. So I should also include some examples on the screen, namely from inputs ranging from one to 10, excuse me. No proof has been found for this conjecture. So people have been trying to empirically verify this conjecture, hoping to find a counter example. And these algorithms, which are used to test the inputs, can be optimized, optimized as we can see later. Um, one way to optimize them is to employ what we call sieves. And the, the research on sieves started as early as 1999, but earlier papers all study the speed ups per table, sorry, per tree depth. And this paper studies these speed ups individually for us, like respective speed ups for every individual sieve. So let's have a look at why the conjecture might be hard to prove. As you can see, um, uh, the paths can get quite unpredictable. So for example, 26 and 28, they both converge to one pretty quickly and they all doesn't reach a very high number. For 27, it goes all the way up to 9,232 and it takes significantly more iterates to reach one. However, there are still some patterns in these iterates and then C's are actually developed from these patterns. So we're going to talk about two improvements in our algorithm algorithms. Improvement one is the idea that we can stop testing once a smaller number is reached. This is so because we're testing the ascending order. And once we reach a smaller number, we know that number has been tested before and there, therefore the remaining iterates can be spared. And sieves yeah, um, is, is similar to improvement one in that it stop testing. It's based on the idea that we can stop testing once the number is, once a smaller number is reached. However, they're even better because we don't even have to test them because we know for some group of numbers, they must reach a smaller number within a finite number of time. And these numbers, we just don't have to test. Um, we'll have a look at how we can see that certain numbers don't have, will reach, must reach a smaller number uh, later in the slide text. So here are some examples of uh, testing with and without improvement number one implemented. And as you can see, it reduces a lot of test, testing iterates, for example, for nine and for six. Uh, so how, this, is, this is how we generate our sieve by a binary tree. So the tree on the left is, the for each node, the left column is the binary representation and the right column is the ternary representation. So for example, n is just, and n zero means that this number ends with a zero in binary, which means binary representation, which means it is of the form two n plus zero, and n one means this number ends in a one binary representation, which means this is the number of the form two n plus one. And similarly, we from uh, n from two n we can have four n plus zero and four n plus two. Say from four n plus two we can have eight n plus two and eight n plus six, etc. And the diagram of the right shows which nodes are closed. By closed, we mean that we can be certain that excuse me, all numbers of this form will reach a smaller number in finite iterations. So for example, 2n, we know it will reach n just after one iterate, which is which must be smaller than 2n. So these numbers, so any every number of the two form 2n does not have to be tested. And these nodes are closed. We mark a small blank circle next to these nodes. So similar is the idea of Similar are nodes of the form 4n plus 1. So yeah, here are 2n plus 0 and 4n plus 1. Again, as you can see, 2n plus 0 reach n after 1 each rate, and 4n plus 1 reach 3n plus 1, which again must be smaller than 4n plus 1. And oops, sorry. These numbers thus do not have to be tested. And these five sieves shown on the screen are what we are what we investigate in this paper. So this diagram 
is from earlier in the 1999 paper from this Portuguese author, showing the speedups for sieves implemented per depth. So for example, the first, the first column K um, denotes the depth of the tree, and O means how many nodes are open, and C means how many nodes are closed, and of O, the, and the next two columns represent the ratio of each. So what we're really concerned with is the fourth column, n over k over two to the power of k, because this represents the percentage of numbers we need to test um, at each uh, tree depth level. So for example, at the zero, sorry, at the zero level, we have to test one hundred percent of the numbers. At the, the first level, we, had to, we only have to test fifty percent of the numbers because we can recall that we don't have to test even numbers, and it um, reduces half of the testing cases. And similar, by the way, up to um, at the fifth level, we have to test only 12.5% of the numbers. What we can notice here is that the, uh, the sieves are not, the speed up of the sieves are not counted individually. In other words, we're sometimes adding one sieve, that's in the case of um, level one and two. Sometimes we're adding two sieves at a time, such as at, in level five. And this, um, the investigation can be more accurate if we can test the sieves individually. So this is precisely what we did in this paper. So the first column shows the range we test. So 1,000, for example, means we're testing every number from 3 to 1,000. We don't have to test 1 and 2 because they're in the cycle already. We're testing every number from 3 to 1,000, and then 1, 10,000, 100,000, et cetera, all the way up to 100 million. The first column shows the testing time without the sieve, so in milliseconds. The first, the second column shows the testing time with one sieve implemented. Sieve one to sieve five just refer to um, the order. The sieve one and sieve five, five to all the sieves from sieve one to sieve five refer to the sieves shown here in numerical order. Sorry. So. Yeah, so no 9.5 milliseconds. So for example, it takes 9.5 milliseconds to test all the numbers from three to 1,000 with no sieve implemented. And then if we implement one sieve, it will reduce it only to 7.9 seconds. And if we add another sieve, it only takes 6.5 milliseconds, et cetera, all the way to 3.5, all the way to 3. Point, sorry, all the way down to 3.4 milliseconds. It's so there's some surprising patterns. So for example, with uh, so for example, with C3 implemented, it actually takes more time for the case of 10,000 testing cases. It actually is goes up to 27 milliseconds from 24 milliseconds. And what this tells us is that if we test the sieves individually, we might get some different results from just compare them per level. And this, thus this paper shows that maybe it is more efficient to implement uh, sieves in individually according to the testing range. Uh, that concludes this speech, this I think.